Welcome back, everybody, to Raven Star's Witching Hour. I'm your host, Solaris Blue Raven, and I'm here with my very special guest, John Storm, and we're discussing what rituals blow up. <laughs> so, you know, good points you were making there, John. You know, it's, there's something to do with, um, sometimes I think when people are doing rituals, it's more about personal will in their avenue versus universal flow. And to me, I think that kind of blows up in their face. It's, it, should be, it should be more the other way around. Um, the, the ritual, if it's really going to serve what it, was in, it, what, what it was first intended to serve, is like a lot of us don't feel all... Uh, pious and holy 24-7. Sometimes we're out of sorts. We're not in connection with the universe. And the, and the problem with the, with the kind of culture and the world we have today is more than ever before, people are actually disconnected from nature, from the world, from, from, you know, we have this artificial time that does us no good at all. You know, people are getting up by the clock and, and, and time really doesn't roll that way. Uh, um, you know, they got to be here at this time at that time. You know, most people prefer to observe nature through a pane of glass rather than be out in it. Uh, you know, everything about our culture, what, what women are told is beautiful, what men is told is strong, are far from it. They, they don't have anything to do with it. It's a very twisted view. So, you know, for people getting disconnected, a good ritual sometimes will do much good. The object of the ritual is not to bring the universe into flow with you, but to put you, you know, as you, as you look upon all the elements of your ritual and what they mean, they're to, to bring to mind all those things that you forgot, they're to remind you. They're to put you in the proper frame of mind, the proper frame of spirit, in order to make the invocations, to have the kind of communion and communication that you want with deity. Uh, uh, not the other way around, you know. You know, uh, I, 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 I have this, this old Janis Joplin song, Oh, Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? <laughs> uh, uh, you know. Right. Uh, uh, you know, people kind of got this gimme, 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 gimme thing. Uh, it, it's amazing what they've done. You know, uh, you know, 300 A.D. Constantine hijacked Christianity as a spirituality and made it into a religion. You know, uh, Christ and his apostles. You know, and it had to be hundreds of years after they passed away, or he would have never been able to pull it off. And then he took a thing like the winter solstice. And, and made it into a Christian holiday, which turns around and tells every child, every parent lies to their child about a Santa Claus who lives at the North Pole with all these elves making toys to bring them presents for Jesus' birthday. Now, now when, they, when, when any other of their friends have birthday, they don't get presents. Right. You know? <laughs> hey, it's your birthday. What did you get me? Uh, you know, me, 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 I want, I want, gimme, gimme, gimme. This is called covetousness. The Bible preaches against that. Jesus preached against it. Right. But on his birthday, we're all going to buy gifts. And if you don't get a gift and it's not a big gift, or if somebody gets a bigger gift than you did, they're obviously loved more than you were. And this is such a perverse thing. <laughs> they, they it is. <laughs> they took a nice pagan holiday, and it's like, well, those pagans weren't doing good things with it anyway, and twisted it up into something so foul, so diabolical. You know, when, when your child gets to that age where you tell them, well, there really isn't no Santa. Have you ever seen how <laughs> betrayed a child is when they find that out, right. how hard they get? Yep. And it's kind of like they lost, they just lost, you just killed any faith your child had in you. Exactly. Well, they do. They hijacked the the pagan holidays. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Like Easter. Right. For crying out loud. Yeah. Constantine didn't want. They, originally, the, the, they were celebrating Passover with the Jews, but he didn't want that because the Jews killed our Lord. It's, I seem to remember some Romans involved too. You know. Yeah. Really. Uh, uh, you know. <laughs> uh, regardless, you know. Uh, and it's kind of like now he was a patron of the Babylonian mystery religion. He wouldn't even get baptized till his deathbed. Not, not that that did any good anyway, but uh, uh, right. but he was the patron, kind of like the Queen of England is the matron of the Anglican Church. Mm -hmm. 
All right. So he was part of this Babylonian, you know, and it's kind of like him and his Nicene cronies, you know, they're, they're, they're all the richest, most powerful men around that, that kind of decided what was going to be your Bible. Out of thousands of scriptures, he picked those 66, no less. You know, they just can't resist the symbology right. in there and, and, and the numerology at all. Uh, uh, you know, and, and so we got Easter it, where, OK, yeah, we're celebrating the resur resurrection of Christ where he came out of the tomb, frightened a bunny rabbit, stepped on an egg, and force-fed ham sandwiches to the Jews. Uh, uh, you know, it's kind of like, no, we're talking about Tammuz and stuff from the early Babylonian religion. He loved the bunny rabbits, you know. It was kind of a spring and a fertility type thing. He was supposed to have had, uh, uh, supposed to have been an immaculate birth, but it was kind of a brother and sister kind of thing, really, and the father died, and so the baby was, uh, you know, immaculate birth. And, so, and when he was a young man, he was killed in a boar hunt, so therefore they ate uh, uh, ham on, on, on Easter that became the custom. Uh, they also had hot cross buns and people would cross themselves in the sign of the T for Tammuz. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but we turn around and, or not we didn't, but Constantine turned around and, hey, warlock that he was, the high priest of, uh, of all of these, his big joke for the world, you know, and it brought him power because people would follow him like the first pope. He turned it from the Roman Empire to the Holy Roman Empire. Either way, he gets to remain the emperor, sit on the gold throne, mm -hmm. wear gold slippers. Right. Well, it's also <laughs> deterring the collectives. They're just literally deterring everybody and actually almost like psychically draining them into a hive collective. Oh, yeah. For his oh, benefit. Yeah. And so know? it's still a ritual. Any way you look at it, it's still a form of, well, of All of them are rituals. It's mm -hmm. just it's just what it accomplishes. Uh, uh, they're, 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 it's also a spell. Right. The, the ritual should be your spell for getting you into the proper mindset. Even when you, you draw your circles and stuff like that, it has to be with intent. You don't do it just, just saying words right. that don't mean anything. The mouth noises don't get it. You can say them. Uh, um, and, and the sounds and the tones you bring out will have some effect, uh, that, you know, that's for sure. But just saying the words, whether you're saying them in Latin, now Latin is a, is a freaking commercial language. It's a trade language. It's not anybody's native tongue, you know, so, so to speak, uh, you know, uh, when the, when the Celts pray in their own language, they pray in Gaelic, you know, when the Hindus, they pray do it in Sanskrit, you know, the, the Jews, they do it in Hebrew or Aramaic, you know, the, the Arabs, they do it in Arabic, you know, the oldest form of their language. Latin is a, is a trade language, you know, for, for scholars and bankers and money changers, right. uh, you know, it kind of tells you where the values are. Uh, you know, when you see spells that are done up in Latin and it's kind of like, that's exactly where they are. That's who, who, who put them out. You know, uh, you ever, you ever read that story of Lilith? Mm -hmm. Uh, the, I think it was from the book of Jubilees or something like that. That was written by a monk and he gives this story about Lilith that, uh, she was this Adam's first wife. Now this was, this was not an ancient script. This was a medieval script. And see, Lilith wanted to get on top. And Adam says, get under me, woman. And, and, and she said, no, no part of it. So she ran off. And God says, well, she's got to come back. And, it, and they use this as a lesson to the women in the church, why they should be submissive to their husband. Or they end up like Lilith, you know, she ends up eating her children and eating the children of everybody else and that. And, you know, this is how you become a demon, you know, by this, this little disobeying your man and, and, and not getting under when he tells you to and all this kind of crap. That was, that was, that was a ploy to, you know, to get women to get in line with their priests and, 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 their, and their men in the church. It's a very patriarchal religion. Mm -hmm. Jesus was matriarchal. Right. And I could prove it by everything he said and did. <laughs> he, Absolutely. Yeah, totally. How he treated women, how he looked at them, you know, and it's kind of like back then, Jews didn't do that. Uh, you know, he was very, very matriarchal. But they turn and take this religion that they name themselves after him and turn it into something else. Then there's the Malleus Maleficarlum, the, you know, the, the, the witch hunters or the witch's hammer, how to spot a witch. And it's kind of, that has 
that is all so much tripe. And, you know, some of it was taken from the confessions of confessing witches, but it's like this. When you got hot irons placed to the bottom of your feet, you will say anything you think they want to hear to make them stop, even if it kills you. Just to just to get delivered from the pain, you know, and and the things that they put in there doesn't have anything to do with real witches. It's just pure propaganda, exactly. uh, serving somebody, lying, bearing false witness against your neighbor. Gee, wasn't there one of the ten suggestions about that? No, no, no. That's right. They weren't suggestions. They were commandments. <laughs> but they don't do them. But they're going to point their finger at you if you don't. Exactly. And it's all about fear, if you ask me, with, with, with a true exactly. traditional, uh, you know, true traditional witches. Yeah, it's always about that. And, and, of course, trying to control and manipulate. And I'm a firm believer in self-empowerment. And that's why I love the craft so much. Now, a lot of people yeah. get confused in so far as light or dark magic. I hear it all the time. But I, I know that there is no real light or dark. I mean, literally, you're dealing with energy and, and the intent behind it and how you use it from day to day. So what, what's uh, your impression with that? Well, how do you feel about it? Actually, I feel there's... There's both, but I don't look at it the same way. It, you know, do you think the dark is the evil stuff? Do you, you know, see, no, we used to go out, we, we used to have a, a custom. Actually, I've done it with my ninja. I've done it with my witches, uh, to, and sometimes they're both. Um, um, you know, we'd go out for a walk out in the woods. We'd walk out northward to uh, Lake Ontario when I lived in Rochester. We'd walk through the woods. It's about a three-mile hike through the woods at midnight. Mm. No lights, no flashlights, not a candle, not a match, not a, you know, and when you're in among the trees, you know, even the starlight doesn't reach you too well in there. So it's pretty doggone dark and you learn to embrace the night. It's a different world at night and it's just as beautiful and wondrous as anything you have in the day. It's just, you know, it's not like the night is ugly and fearsome. So a lot of people have fear of the dark, but we learn to embrace and, and to you know, to push through the dark, to perceive, even when there is no light, we are the light. We bring the light with us. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, and, you know, not in a, not with like D cells or batteries or anything like that, but of our own perceptions of what, you know, Mother Earth gave us. We're moving through Mother Earth. We're perceiving. Mother takes care of us. Mm -hmm. We have this trust. We have this faith. We have this relationship. And we embrace the night, and it is dark, and it is, it, you know, different creatures come out at night than do in the day. They're not bad creatures. They serve you. You know, people see the bats and go, ooh, awful spooky, and it's kind of, that sucker's up there eating almost his weight in bugs. Mm -hmm. They're you know? cute, and, too. <laughs> uh, well, some will argue that point. Me, right, I, yeah. It's like, you know, look, the grass snake will do it. The frogs will do it. The tree frogs will do it. They're eating bugs, mosquitoes, and they, all the things you don't want to be bothered with. Right. And the more healthier they are and the more of them out there doing it, the less mosquitoes and stuff and deer flies and that that actually get around to get a chance to sink their little stingers into you. Yeah, and so it, it's they're a blessing. And it's kind of like, and it's a wonderful thing how all of nature works together in, in, in so many, everybody's got their niche, everybody's got their place. And most humans don't understand their own place in nature and in the universe. And, and you know, and, and we belong here. Uh, uh, you know, me, I, I've learned, I belong here. And, and for me, that was a very important lesson uh, after all the twisting of MK Ultra, and even while it was happening, uh, I think this was my saving grace. Yep. I agree uh, with you. You know, and there's dark things, and there's kind of like, well, let's take a look at a sword or a handgun. There's, there, what they both have in common are neither are made for hunting, to, to gather meat for your table. Neither can be used to harvest crops or chop wood or... Uh, um, you know, they don't, basically they have a dark usage. They're both designed to kill people effectively. Um, now you say, well, isn't that an evil thing? Isn't that, it is a dark thing. Uh, evil, it, well, it depends on who you are, you know, or, you know, you, you, you Ted Bundy or something like that. Yeah, that could be pretty doggone evil. Or, or George Bush, for that matter, uh, or, 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 you know, or even Barack Obama. It can be pretty doggone evil. 
Uh, but if you're a person defending his home and his children, his wife, or, or you're a woman defending yourself, taking care of yourself, that could be a downright blessing to have. And it could be a blessing for the people who don't even know that they were the next victims in line if he lived. Uh, you know, uh, they, they, you know, you know, good and bad. Uh, well, there is good and bad, uh, but you know, dark and light. There's that too, but it's not in the same context. Right. No, I agree with you on that one. Now we had a question in chat here for a second. It was a noodle uh, one nine three eight seven. He asked if you have had problems being targeted. <laughs> <laughs> in my whole life. Right. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you escape that one? Right. Uh, you don't, you don't, you, you just learn to be tough. I, you know, for a while there in my teenage years, it was kind of like, well, you kind of get whipped if you're good, you get whipped if you're bad. And for a little while in my teens there for a few years, I kind of like, well, I might as well be bad and earn it. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I made some trouble and of course they did everything they could to make me regret it. And all my grandma had to do was look at me like she was a little disappointed and it just broke my heart and I got back in line, but I had to deal with them damn MK Ultra. And then it was kind of like, well, I could raise a fit and I could do my country some favors, do my community favors, not just my country, you know, just wherever I was, just be responsible. I, I, I am a very well-trained killer, but, uh, to kill anybody or anything like that, it's kind of like, no, that's like, uh, it's like uh, killing a mosquito with a bazooka, you know, y y you need to be sent after the really, really bad guys. There's no glory in picking on someone smaller than you, uh, uh, but to take out some really nasty sucker and who's murdering and everything like that and just stop his career in its tracks. Uh, look, it's not going to stop because you ask nice and it's kind of like you need people like me or people like me need to be responsible with what we know and what we have. Right. So I, I, I did manage to manipulate things just enough to say, well, I'm only going to take these kinds of jobs. And, uh, and even then, they kind of didn't like me dictating things. You're a slave. You're a piece of property. You're an asset is the, is the politically correct word that they use. And it's like somebody calls you an asset. You need to slap them so hard it knocks the taste right out of their mouth. Um, you know, uh, uh, but, uh, my last few missions kind of went bad and it's kind of like, okay, I dropped out, you know, turned my back on them. They sent somebody to lean on me at first. They thought it was really stupid thing to do. Uh, and, uh, you know, just left a few bodies about in, in a, in a very embarrassing place. Hey, what are you doing in our country? You know, uh, uh, you know, with guns and all this kind of stuff, you like you're operating here, and it's kind of like they didn't do that so much after that. But then they would do all kinds of things. They microwaved my house. They put snake venom in my uh, uh, insulin. Uh, anytime I got in a job and lasted five years, about the point where they would, uh, uh, you, your your employers would have this vested interest. They'd start putting money into your four hundred one k. Uh, somebody would come up and say, hey, you know, he's a Vietnam era veteran and he's killed more guys than cancer. And if he has a flashback, you know, uh, by the time the cops get here, he could kill all you, you know, you know, even without a weapon. And, you know, next thing you know, I'm laid off and I'm about pounding the pavement, trying to support my four kids and, and, uh, you know, and, and I'll be unemployed for a few months till I find the next job. And, oh, and, and that's been, that's been my whole life. Every chance they get to make things hard for me, they do it uh, right. to make me regret it. They don't let me leave the country. I can't fly an airplane. Uh, you mentioned witchclan.com. Mm -hmm. They used to hack that regularly. If I went away for the weekend, when I come back Monday, I had to get that sucker back up again uh, until they finally just took it down entirely. Uh, I said the more they hassled me, I, I put up a, a, a whole forum in there called Rants, Raves, and Ruckus, where I talk about the politics or the news or the things that were on that were just not so or not right, and I'd show why they weren't and, you know, supply links and everything else. And uh, finally they says, oh, no, we had enough of that, and they just took it away entirely. Mm -hmm. You know, I did my book so that I would have some income and royalties. They took the royalties. 
Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. They're always trying to sabotage. You know, what's really interesting with all your skills, obviously this can transcend on a remote influence level, paranormal abilities, obviously with astral mm -hmm. projection and whatever. So it's interesting to me when you look at the timeline of all your experience and what you've acquired, um, I suspect that will transcend. And, and I do suspect you actually can do those things on a multidimensional level. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So that's definitely. probably, do you think that's really what they were looking at more than the physical was the paranormal aspects of what you're capable of? Uh, I think that worries them. Right. Um, but the thing, and, and it's probably why they back, well, they didn't back off. They backed off to the point where I can't just reach out and kill them, but I can still make life rough for them too. And I do sometimes. Um, um, but, uh, uh, you know, like I say, they'll, they'll do it from behind the scenes somewhere. If I go to any hospital or anything that has any kind of government funding, and just about all of them do, they'll lean on somebody there to, you know, make things just kind of go harder. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I do have uh, ability to retaliate, but sometimes I don't like to retaliate because I know the karma coming is worse than anything that I, I mean, more ingenious <laughs> and right. right down the right pike than anything that I could think of myself. And it's like, I just have to bear it out. Right. And if they kill me, I mean, if they just outright kill me, when I drop this skin, I will be more dangerous than, to them than <laughs> ever before because I'll be liberated. I will not right. have, the skin will not be my boundary. It will not be my anchor. I will be free. And you already know how my soul is inclined. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I don't mean to, to, to do dirty. I'm looking forward to... You know, how many parents sitting home, you know, some fella out in the Mideast kind of gets home and there's some freaking nerd with a joystick somewhere watching him from a drone. You know, he gets home to his family, going to have some dinner, sits down at a table with his wife and children and a drone goes and pops a Hellfire missile into his into his home. The kids are just collect. He, they suspect he's a terrorist. He's not tried as a terrorist. Nobody's given evidence that he's a terrorist or that he's done any bad thing. It's because he's wearing his turban. Looks like it's wrapped a little tight today. I think he's a terrorist. Let's kill him. And then let's just kind of hang that drone back. And uh, when the community comes in, oh, this terrible thing happened and they try to see either pull out the bodies to give them a decent burial or see if there's any survivors. They do what they call the double tap and, and, and get some of them too. And it's kind of like this, these are all things like being done in our name. And, and every time something like that happens and people just scream their guts out to the heavens for their children or their loved ones, it's gone. I feel it. It's my earth. That's my mom. I'm, I'm a mama's boy, you know, just I'm Danu's faithful son. Uh, I feel it. And I'm not going to allow that. I've always been the big brother in my family. And, uh, you know, uh, and a dad after that. Uh, you know, I'm a daddy and I'm a big brother. And, and I have a part in this family. We are all family. We're, you know, those those poor Muslim fellas over there and, you know, the, the gals, the kids, everybody is. And it's like, I'm not letting it go on, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm going to be, I'm that spirit. I'm a part of that spirit that's going to have something to say about it, that they're thumbing their noses at and, and, and everything. And it's like, I'm going to give them bloody noses. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, they, they pick and choose their battles, literally. I mean, that's what we all should be doing, literally. But I don't think they do that. They're reckless about how they take people down and who they're taking down and if they're actually really um, guilty or not of something. And, you know, and look at all the criminal cabals that are literally running the globe right now. I mean, these are people that are exactly. insidious people. Uh, this and, is yeah. What I call the golden age of warlocks, mm -hmm. oathbreakers. It's the golden age for them, and they th and and they know it and they feel it. And they, uh, but some of them kind of got that little wind up their back, mm -hmm. and they should, because we are on the cusp of a change. Right. Uh, and it could go either way. It honestly could. I keep looking for a tip. Excuse me, a tipping point. Mm -hmm. um, for those of us that are awake and aware to kind of outnumber the others. And if we could reach that before some of this stuff comes to a head, we can make this transition a lot nicer and easier. But it's probably going to get darker before it gets lighter. But it is going to get lighter. 
I think it is too. And I, I do think that, you know, like you say, once we, once we transfer out here, we'll be more powerful than they can possibly comprehend. I think that's very true. Yeah, um, I think they should be very worried. Goes yeah. back where, right where it belongs and right where we're inclined, you know, right. with creation. And, you know, we're, we're part of it. We're siblings with all of creation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they're separated. They're estranged siblings. And right. they did this themselves. That was their choice. Absolutely. Yeah, they're yeah. separate. There's no doubt about that. I want to ask you a little bit about the symbols. And I, I know that we love wearing our, our symbols and, and this and that with the craft. But obviously, they're not necessary literally for protection. Obviously, they're, you know, to me, I don't want to say they're props with, with ritual format. Um, but I, I do think that sometimes people get a little too codependent on those things when, in fact, mm-hmm. we, we are the pillars. We are the strength. Um, what's mm-hmm. your impression of that? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I like, uh, well, I, I, I follow my, my symbols is also the same thing as my ritual is, is essentially it's to remind me, um, like I continually wear black on black. Mm-hmm. Um, now it serves me in a number of ways other than the old traditional way, even with the ninjutsu and that I can blend into, a, you know, it, it doesn't draw the eye. It's not a, that doesn't reflect light or cause a glint to, to make anybody's eye jerk in my direction. So if I just stand still in a shady area, people, you know, their eyes invariably pass me by. Uh, so, I mean, it gives me a little security. I can disappear. I can, I, I can do that. But as a, it reminds me of my place as a witch. When one became a witch back in the old days, now, you know, among the Celtic cultures, you're talking about a place where clans are identified by different colored tartans. Mm-hmm. Now, if you became a witch or a druid, you wore either the druid's white, which is the solar aspect of the... Uh, of the craft back then, you know, I hate to say the religion, uh, Pliny called it the, uh, two horns of the same bull, uh, between the witches and the Druids. And, and he, and he was very, it, it was a nice analogy. Um, they were the solar aspects. We were the lunar aspects. The, they, we wore the black, they wore the white. These were neutral colors. When, when one became a Druid or a witch, one put on a neutral clan color. One did not serve one's own clan anymore. You served all the clans for for the betterment of our whole people. Uh, it served us all. If you just had this clan over here and these guys just starved off into nothing, your whole people were less for it. Uh, you know, there's safety in numbers and, you know, you want everybody healthy and happy and well-educated and, and you know, productive. And, you know, this, uh, uh, you know, so you, you help kind of keep it that way. And uh, when I, you know, when I get up and I'm always wearing black, I never forget who I am and what I am and what I'm supposed to be doing and how I'm supposed to, my mindset should be for all of the clans. Uh, however, I've, I've kind of gone past my own clan and, well, maybe I didn't. We are all our one clan. We're all on Mother Earth. You know, I, I'm a priest of Danu, uh, the Earth, Mother Mother Nature, Mother Earth. And, you know, if you're living on it and you're standing there with two legs, two arms, two eyes, whatever, humanoid, and at, uh, you're part of my job. <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot yeah. of sense. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't mean I got to pass a plate around. I'm here right. to serve you, not the other way. Actually, I'm here to serve mother, and you're a part of mother, too. So I'm just an older brother. No, I think that's a, a good perspective to have for sure, especially when it comes to the craft. Yeah. There's a lot of people but that don't see it. Like that. Right. There's the symbolism serving to, to kind of help me keep in the right mindset, not the other way around. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, uh, you know. A reminder to some degree. Yeah. yeah. And of course, there's so much taboo and, and uh, people get so nervous around symbols. But, you know, that's yeah. not my well, problem. Sometimes, <laughs> too, we're flying our colors when we do. I've got a medallion that has a unicorn on it. That's my birth sign. It also has to do with my, my Celtic secret name. That's, it's who I am, you know, inside, spiritually speaking, you know, the, the focus, the, 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 the single-mindedness, the strength, uh, uh, and all of that. That's, that's my personal sign. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like uh, flying my freak flag, as they used to say. Uh, you know, a lot of people do it with their, with their pentagrams, and it's kind of like, yes, this is who I am, and I'm proud of it. Uh, and, I, you know, you don't stand for something, you fall for anything. And, you know, when we do those things, we are making a statement. And we should 
be that way. You know, it's like when I see Christians with their cross, well, cross was not Jesus's favorite symbol mm -hmm. uh, for all the obvious reasons, but they don't get it. it his was the fish. And it's, but nonetheless, if you're going to make that claim to be his follower, then you should do the things he said. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things I say to do? You, you, know, you know, what the hell's the matter with these people? So, I mean, if you're going to wear a cross, even, you should, you, you should epitomize, or at least try to epitomize those qualities that he had. Uh, you know, uh, take them to yourself. This is what I stand for. This is what I believe in. It's kind of, I don't have a problem with the things he stood for. I, I particularly like them. I, I wish more Christians were actually Christ-like. Me too. Yeah, this would be this would be one <laughs> swell place. I think to be. Jesus was more pagan-oriented, but yeah. <laughs> Well, actually, he was preaching to pagans. That's the whole thing. In that New Testament is written in Greek. It was written to pagans, Gentiles. It, 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 we were talking about Lutherans and Presbyterians and stuff like that. You're talking about pagans. Right. That's the first century. And they understood exactly what he was talking about. And it, and it made all the sense in the world. And, and it was not lost on him you know, when, when they said he was the word, the logos, because will and word was how we did business. It wasn't our, just our religion. It was our infrastructure, you know, an unbroken will and word. Uh, you gave your word to somebody. If you're the blacksmith, you're selling vases, you're selling food. Hey, this is fresh, disease free. And if people buy from you and it's always been that way, this man's good for his word. That was your advertising. That's what brought you customers. And if he, and if your word was no good, that's what lost you customers and made you a pauper mm -hmm. uh, uh, back then. This was very important stuff. And, you know, here's this Jesus and he gets out and he says, well, yeah, he, he's the son of God. He's the word made flesh. And it's kind of like, now see, pagans got this concept of this sound that was made at the beginning of creation. Some say, oh, but I don't care what you say it is. Everybody's kind of got this thing. This is a pagan concept. Christians don't learn this stuff in Sunday school, but pagans did. Uh, you know, that, that, that word that, that brought the world into being. It's a, and it even says in John, by him were all things created, not anything created, you know, that, that wasn't by him and all this kind of stuff. He understood that. Now, when he gets to the grave of Lazarus or something like that, Lazarus was dead, the little girl in the funeral possession, she's dead. He comes up. Now, does he, does he bring out his censer of incense and wave it around and sprinkle a little holy water and chant in Latin and make the sign of the cross? No, he says, little girl, get up. She gets up. Mm -hmm. Lazarus, come forth. He comes forth. Tells the sea to be calm and still. It's calm and still. He speaks the word, will and word, the will of God, the word of God. He speaks it, and it is so. Pagans understand that concept. Mm -hmm. Gent those Gentile pagans understood that concept. Christians don't get it. They get up there. They make promises before God that they're going to love, honor, and cherish each other till death do us part, and less than half of them ever do. Mm-hmm. That's very well said. I totally agree with you on that one. Yeah. Well, it's just, once again, it's about self-empowerment, but also um, there's just the sacred union. I mean, it's the merge with, with whatever you want to call the divine. But yeah. somewhere along the way, I think they've, they've missed they missed it. Um, not sure why. Uh, could be a lot of other things, but yeah. Well, it was it was made to serve other people. Somebody mm -hmm. got up in a nice, pretty road, plays dress up, and pressed the hell out of them. Yes, clothes make the man, you know. What you don't know can't hurt you. Image is everything. And it's kind of like witches know all of this the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we used to have, now, I'm told it was a rather unique coven, but I think people got exposed to a lot of the wrong kinds of covens somewhere along the line. Mm -hmm. When I was a boy, I mean, even from about 12 upwards, I belonged to a coven of Arcadian Dianic witches. They have a little male energy. The, the, the full-blown Dianic by themselves don't like any male energy in there at all. All right, but Arcadians can be, you know, you can be both. But I was the only male member in there. But uh, we had to make a promise to, you know, those of us that were younger to remain virgin up until a certain age. And, and we did. And will and word, we're not going to break our word. We want the magic. But twice a year, once or twice, at least once, but oftentimes twice, we had what they called a sky-clad ceremony, a nude ceremony. 
plus nothing, minus nothing. You, you accept each other. Nobody's wearing no ritualistic headpiece to look better than anybody else. You are what you are. This is how you came into the world. This is how you go out of the world. This is how you're accepted among your brothers and sisters in this coven, just for who you are and, and the way you are. No glamours needed or anything like that. Just, And I thought it was a very, very honest um I really liked that. Uh, 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 you know, not you know, my my uh, brother-in-law. Well, he was my best friend back then. He never went to one of these, but he'd say, "Wow, you're really naked with all these women," and all this kind of like, yeah, yeah, kind of walking in with an erection is considered very, very bad form. Uh, yeah, it's obviously your mind is not where it really needs to be, and if it was, it just wouldn't. You know, honestly, it, it it's just. It's not you don't even think about it. You, you, you know, right. you know, uh, you know. Well, it's it, like it was, going to a nude beach. After a while, it's just you know, it's just a suit. It's a suit. That's the bottom. Yeah, line. yeah. You know, other places will use it as a as a little cause for a little lasciviousness and fooling around, and it's kind of like, well, if that's where your head is at, but uh, and there's a certain amount of divine in that in the right context, but uh, it, it, you know. The apples and oranges. <laughs> right. You know? Well, people get weirded out when you say sky cloud and they don't understand. They do think it's all about, you know, orgies and all this craziness. And, and it's not. You're exactly right. Uh -oh. I mean, if you have a legitimate coven, it's it's usually just about, you know, this is this is you. Um, this is your yeah. divine Yeah, being. you meet in a circle. You don't meet like, you know, all witches are clergy and all clergy are actually witches. It means wise. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So if your your pastor or priest isn't wise, you got a problem because he's your leader, <laughs> you know. But with them, they stand up on a podium, raised in front, in front between you and the altar. You know, though though they say there's only one mediator between God and man, and that's the man Christ Jesus. You got this priest fella up there between you and the cross and you and the altar, and and he's saying symbolically something that basically, if you've got issues with God, you need to come to him about it. Now, witches don't meet like that, where one stands in front of you all, brings you the message, or, you know, warms himself at the bonfire, and then comes up and, and hugs you and warms you and while he's picking your pockets. Uh, uh, it doesn't work that way among witches. You're in a circle. People in a circle recognize no high or low. Mm -hmm. your power travels laterally in a circle, not up and down. Uh, and in and, and, and the truth of a, of a good, honest coven, well, we had a matriarch that took care of kind of family business, and that's the way that always was. Mm -hmm. But a high priest or a high priest, we're all priests or priestesses. But like, uh, let's say I'm at the 12 o'clock position in this circle, all right, and I'm going to be the one that uh, organizes this particular Sabbath or espat. All right. Now the next full moon, that might be your job. All right. And then in the full moon after that, it'll be the next person's. Uh, you know, everybody kind of gets their turn doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, being the high priest and the high priestess. Now in some, they've kind of adopted that 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 Christian paradigm type thing where, okay, I'm the high priest for life, or I'm the high priestess for life. And sometimes it might work for a couple of years, you know, until you get people up to the level where they can they can organize a, a an espad or or, or or a sabbath like that, uh, you know, and, and then you know then you give everybody a chance to do their thing and their own chance to shine for that day or month or whatever, and uh, you know that that can work out, but it shouldn't be a permanent thing. Right. Um, that's a power thing. And, and, you know, they're struggling, you know, witches don't give their power away to just anybody. We agree to meet today. You're the high priest. Next month, I'll be the high priest. You know, the month after that, somebody else entirely is going to be the high priest. And that's the way it should be. We're witches. Exactly. I totally agree. Yeah, no, no ego or what I call bitchcraft. <laughs> right. So, yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah, we spell it with a W, not a B. That's right. <laughs> totally. Oh, you yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we did touch on, I, I did talk to you off air about the possibility of you, um, not to switch gears, but to, to maybe write a book on Survivor's Manual of MK Ultra. And I don't know if you'll ever get into that or not, but I, I think you have so much knowledge on so many levels, whether it's craft or, or yeah. even the way you've been able to navigate through the MK Ultra program, which is horrific. Um, that would be so helpful to a lot of people who are 
who are just trying to get their lives back, who have been uh, subjected uh, to some kind yeah. of program. I think that would be a, it'd even be a good show all in itself too. Uh, right. Like I say, one of the, one of the first precepts like that. And it's a problem that I, I don't think you even have to be an MK ultra or MK monarch to have the same problem because the culture that tries to disassociate us from a root, uh, Karl Marx was once quoted that a people separated from their roots are easily persuaded. And that's so true. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's an older proverb that he's speaking from than, than you know, it, it's, uh, Quoted as being by him, but it's a much older quote. Uh, but the th but the thing about that is, is that's true of, of so many of us. Uh, you know, children will go out; they don't know who they are, what kind of person they are. Uh, you know, go out on a journey to find themselves. Uh, and um, and I don't think I had to really do that, but in an, in an essence, I think I, that's exactly what I was doing. Uh, you know, whether I liked it or not. Um, but find out who you are. Understand who you are, exactly who you are. What do you like? What do you admire and respect in people? See, that's the kind of person that you should grow to be. That's the kind of goals you should set for yourself. I really like that about that person. Mm -hmm. Why do you like that? Because that's the way your heart is inclined. Now, when you know that about yourself, when you, when you learn, you know, as the Delphi Oracle is written over the, the entryway to know thyself, uh, there's, a, there's a very strong command, a very wise thing. For me, I, I had sat down because there was things they had me do and things they did to me that were just so wrong, and I had to understand what was wrong about it. One of the cool things, people sometimes call it prayer, but sometimes just putting things into language helps you structure those feelings in such a way, put them in into structured language, helps you understand, you know, what's really going on with you, you know, and it's kind of, I feel so bad about this, so wrong about this, exactly why, what kind of person, this is the kind of person that I wanted to be, now we're getting somewhere, and, and I understand who I am, and that's who I am, you know, uh, um, and when they would put their little commands, and even to this day sometimes when I hear that, punch this person dead in their nose, just break that nose, shove it right up into their skull, and, you know, I, I mean, I get this stuff. I, I really do. Uh, it, it's just I don't do it because it's not me. That's somebody else speaking. And I don't care if they're speaking in my head, speaking in my ear. It don't matter. It's not me. Me doesn't want to hurt anybody for you know me wants to be the kind of person that has the greatest gift in the world given to men and angels to relieve suffering and bring joy mm -hmm. and that ain't gonna do it right yeah uh, the higher self really kind of dictates and i think that's knowing thyself is really being connected to the higher self if you ask me there exactly is, yeah there is a question here um, from chat from someone let's see uh, what crystals do does john use for healing if any Oh, actually, uh, actually, I gave them to my sister, my, my best ones for that. But I had a small quartz crystal ball, and I had a small lead crystal ball. And uh, I had a little lead stand for the lead crystal ball. Now, in magic, lead has this very grounding, negating property, all right, which comes into handy uh, when you, when you want to do healing. Now, and, and that sphere type thing it'll both crystals will resonate with any kind of energy you put in it the quartz is downright piezoelectric you can even use it like a capacitor mm -hmm. uh, to store energy your own life force your own chi you can store into it and i you know at the end of the day i'd pump what chi i had you know before i go to bed into this and just keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it and the other one i'd use and i'd set it on a lead stand now if I had some aches and pains or even a disease, uh, my uh, daughter had a, a cat that was paralyzed and I used to massage him with the lead one first to take all the pain and the agony and all the, just all the bad vibes, if you want to put it very new agey in that. You can call it what you will. There's a, there's a number of things and it would resonate. It would draw that out and then I'd put it in a little lead cubicle and it kind of went down its own little black hole. You didn't have to worry about it because any energy you put in it and, 
and that with the lead and that involved eventually just kind of got sunk away into nowhere or, or somewhere else. Now, the quartz crystal, after I did that, got the negative out, I used the quartz with my extra life energy. It just resonates like crazy. And sometimes I'd set it on a mirror and, you know, out in the sunlight or out in the full moonlight or, you know, uh, uh, very, you know, like I say, it resonates with whatever kind of energy. It's the same, you know, you've got quartz crystals that's resonating with the energy in the battery and your watch and your computer and your, that's the nature of this thing. And then I would massage with this life energy, pumping it in to things. Great for healing. Um, it's, a, it's a nice little massage tool. It, it, it feels kind of good. And, um, but uh, I swear by those. I've, I've seen miracles uh, performed them even with it uh, before. But uh, I don't have them no more. But uh, at least those ones. But I got some others that I use from time to time. But mm. those are my favorites. Yeah, those are, that's good stuff right there. And I know, of yeah. course, um, you have your book, Practical Magic, on bookricks.com, and I put your mm-hmm. link in the chat. So are you still working on chapters, or where are you at with that? Are you just about finished oh, with that, it? No, that one's done. I might do a, another one someday. I, I have a book three of the Witch Clan series that I, I'm only about halfway through. I really need to finish, um, uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll put that out, but I don't know when I'll get to it. I'm just kind of taking life still kind of one day at a time, trying to get most of my strength back, spend some time with the family, spend, you know, try to, try to get some things done. Uh, it, it looks like I might survive a little longer, but nobody knows how many days they got left, you know, but. Well, let's just, hope you just, stick around for a while. Well, yep. I'll stick around forever regardless, <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, but you, you know, you just, you're not promised tomorrow you have right now. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you, you don't get up and say, I'm going to do that tomorrow. And it's like, you do what you can right now. And, you know, if, if tomorrow don't come, you did your best. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's the nice thing about this. It's like kind of like a poker game. You don't even have to win the game. All you got to do is play the best you can with the cards you're dealt. That's all that's required of any of us. Mm-hmm. You know, people think, well, this person's rich and famous and got all this and that. And if I was that, I'd do this and I'd do that. No. What do you do with the cards you're dealt? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you that's know. a good point you make right there. Yeah, I appreciate life while you're here, without a doubt. Because, you know, even if we, when we transfer out, it's a different avenue. It's a different type of experience. You don't get to touch things the way you touch them on this planet. You know what I mean? So Actually, it's so different. a little more intimately. You think? Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I get the impression that it's just different in, in a different kind of energy, more etheric and, and less physical, shall we say. Well, uh, the physical matters less, mm-hmm. but you're still very much who you are, still aware of who you are. You still appear to yourself and to those who know you as you are uh, uh, or as they remember you, at least when you're healthy and you're well or whatever. Uh, there is going to be a time when you're back in a physical body, but it will be an immortal physical body. Uh, that's kind of a future event that I know that's kind of uh, on the horizon. Mm-hmm. Um, um, there's a number of cultures that even have that same prophecy, and I don't doubt them. I, I, I kind of see ahead a little ways, well, quite a ways sometimes. Uh, so sometimes I think, oh, this is coming up and going to happen right now, and it's like, no, nah, it never does. That's interesting. Right. So it almost sounds like you're talking about ascension with light body into the physical, like you take your body with you and it mutates into more of an immortal light body design? Um, something, yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of a lot of the prophecies describe very much that, but very solid. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you eat food, drink stuff. Uh, like you know, the immortals. Up, shake hands, touch, hug, uh, you know, embrace, um uh, you know, uh, it, it's, uh, it, but even in the spiritual planes, um, like I say, even more intimately than you've known here with far more freedom, um, you know, you can just think of where you want to go and it's just a step away. Nice. Uh, yeah. uh, rather than having to walk the you know length of the entire planet to get there or, or you know, the, the next galaxy over, you, ju- you just step over. Right. Um, you know, there's, you, you have more dimensionality you, 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 in my uh, my uh, little thing there, dimensionalities and perception. Those videos mm-hmm. I show basically if you here's on a two dimensional plane. If you draw a triangle, 
the sum total of the angles of that triangle never exceed 180 degrees. All right, but if you draw that same triangle, if you, if you take a globe of the Earth and start at the equator and make a 90 degree line straight to the North Pole and then make another 90 degree line straight back to the equator from there and, and then a 90 degree line from there to the other line, you have a perfect triangle that, that amounts to 270 degrees. Three times 90 is 270. So the more dimensions we add, the more, the, the more power exponentially we have to do things and get things done. Now, when we go from 4D to 5D and beyond, the, the shortest distance in Euclidean geometry between two points is a straight line. But when we start getting into 5D in that, the shortest distance between two points is a fold. Mm -hmm. So it's just you know it's just stepping across. Right. Uh, so so there's a lot more available to us. A lot more intimately we'll know each other and know others uh, uh, than than we ever had before. Um, these things I'm sure of. It's like I, I you know I, I don't have any doubt about that. I, I've seen some of this, and especially the last few years. Uh, I've been narcoleptic. Uh, I mean, some days on my bad days, I, was, I could sleep 80, 18, 20 hours a day. Mm. You know, you, uh, most of you sleep about a third of your life away, and that part of you is lost. You, you know, uh, it happened, you experience things, but you don't remember them. And me, I remember all of them. I could tell you stuff I dreamt about when I was three years old. Mm. Uh, um, you know, uh, sometimes it's other planes. Sometimes it's recreational. Sometimes it's it's all kinds of things. But now I spend probably between twelve and fourteen, sometimes as much as sixteen hours a day sleeping. Mm -hmm. And when I when I close my eyes in this world, you know, my head hits the pillow. I open my eyes somewhere else. And I'm still alive. I'm still experiencing things. I'm still doing things. Sometimes it's on a very ethereal plane. I'm the ghost of a living man wandering the earth. Mm. Um, and uh, it's an interesting experience. Mm -hmm. uh, I see things. I see people. I, uh, some of them quote physical people, but we're all spiritual people. You know, they talk about ghosts as like paranormal. Well, no, it's very normal because without your ghost, your meat suit ain't standing no more. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it may be on a, a hospital bed with a respirator hooked to it or something, but uh, if, if it's, you know, you still want to call that alive, um, you know. Uh, right. it, yeah. And what's your YouTube channel name if people want to access your YouTube channels? Uh, Storm 53, and the older one is Witchman 53. Okay, great, because you have some awesome videos on there. Yeah, yeah. Most of them, most of the, all the best ones, I think, are over on the Storm 53. They they blocked me off. I was never able to hook back up to Witchman 53, yes. but a lot of the videos are still there, the, the, the earlier ones. Yeah, I remember accessing those. Those are really good. And, John, we're almost out of time here. I can't believe it in the illusion of time, but I want to thank you so much for being with us tonight. It's been wonderful. It's always great to have you on with us. And thank it you was so much. Yeah, and it's no it's so nice to hear your voice and see you because I know you're um you're getting so much better and I'm really happy to hear this. So Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And and of course, um you guys stay tuned. Thank you for tuning in tonight and stay tuned for Shiny Side Out with David Dunger and Mickey, of course, coming up next to shine to uh, sell you on it tonight from down under as I spit <laughs> that one out. So so in a world that's so chaotic as it is right now, John, I mean we have a few minutes here plus or minus. You know, what is the best thing people can do to try to, to recapture their life and their path of spirit? whatever they're into, whatever they believe in, because it seems to me people are lost. Well, another one is to be true to yourself, but first you have to find out who yourself is. Set those goals or set that. This is what I admire most about these people and that people. Well, that's the way you should be. That's the way you're inclined. That's your inclination. That's the core of the matter. That's your spirit. Uh, like I say, things come from the inside of you out and work their way outward. Your, your body, what you do, what you say, is a physical manifestation of what's going on in your spirit or your soul. And, uh, you know, you should, should understand those. Make a list if you have to. For a while when I was a, a young man, uh, I used uh, some of the methods of my handlers and made like sleep tapes and looping tapes, you know, to set the speakers under my pillow. And these are the things I'm going to stand for. These are the things that I'll allow in my life. This is what I want for me. This is the man I am. This is the man I will accept. 
This other guy, uh, I, I don't want to sell out. Will and word, I'm going to be unbroken. I'm going to be a powerful witch when I leave this world. Uh, uh, I'm going to be a powerful witch now, every day, uh, moment by moment. Everything's moment by moment choices. We choose. Uh, life is about choices. It's not what you were born or where you were born or what family you were born into. Your life is about your own choices. Uh, even when you don't make a choice and you let others choose for you, that's a choice mm -hmm. that you're responsible for. So uh, picking that out and understanding that, and, you know, when you have that anchor, your own anchor, um, it's kind of hard for people to influence you or mind control you. I mean, even when you hear it, it just, you don't accept it. You just, you know, you pass it off. Um, once you break the spell and you start waking up to so many things, so many things that used to sway you one way or another, go out and buy one of these right now. You resist it because you, you, you've you already seen how that works. So, you know, when they come up and they say, you won't be happy, women will like you better, the other sex will like you better, whatever, if you have this in your life, and it's kind of like, you already know better. It don't work on you. But your neighbor can't get up and get to the freaking store fast enough. Mm-hmm, right. Uh, yeah, that's well said. You know, really setting the intent, executing your free will and choices. Yeah, I agree with you on all of these things. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that's the biggest thing. And I love the way when we'll get into this next time you come back, but we definitely want to talk <laughs> about more about the reprogramming of the mind, especially taking your power back step by step. And, and you have some really good points about that, um, setting the intent of what you want to accomplish and who you are, defining your, yourself and creating yeah. boundaries, I would suspect, for anything that comes in that you don't want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I really appreciate that. And I know we're going to run out of time here, but I have one quick question for you. What sure. about 3 a.m. in the morning? Is that significant to you? Is, would you say that's the time that's most powerful for magicians? You know, it's funny, but very often when I wake up often in the middle of the night or last night, I got woke up by three taps, sounds like three taps on the door. And it wasn't my daughter, but it was around three in the morning. Really? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it, there is something very pertinent about that hour. Wow, um, interesting. Well, I just had to yeah. ask because that's one that I resonate with, too. All right, everybody. Well, thank you, John. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time. Uh, All right.